So in today's video, we're gonna be throwing it back all the way to 2005 GOAT format Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm gonna be showing off my Chaos Turbo build for this format. Now, I don't do too much of the Time Wizard stuff on the channel like Edison and GOAT format, but I love playing those formats with my friends. And if you guys wanna see more of that GOAT format or Edison format content, let me know in the comment section down below and I can definitely bring it to you guys. I have so many different decks that are not actually talked about too often here on YouTube. So I think I could be bringing you guys that content, but let me know if you guys want to see it in the comment section down below. With that being said, though, let's go back all the way to 2005 and show you guys this aggressive build of Chaos. It's called Chaos Turbo. Let's go. So to set things off, of course, we are playing one of the BLS Envoy of the Beginning, as well as two Chaos Sorcerer. Of course, this is Chaos Turbo, so the whole point of the deck is to get these monsters on your side of the field. This deck is really aggressive the way it plays. You may not be OTKing a lot, but there are situations where you can OTK getting these monsters on the field. The rest of the deck essentially wants to set these guys up, because once you're able to break your opponent's boards, once you're able to set these up, you're going to be able to do a lot of damage and try to go in for game as fast as possible, which is really nice, right? And then we're also playing two Dekoichi. Dekoichi, of course, is going to help us draw into to our deck it's also a dark monster speaking of dark monsters we're playing two kaiko as well the reason i like to play the koichi at two as well as kaiko at two is one kaiko at 1800 is a really powerful beat stick for you which is really nice it also is really powerful against the mirror match and a lot of decks in general just kaiko is just so good into i like two and two i think they're the perfect ratios and then of course you're playing a lot of the staple goat format cards that you guys are going to see tribe infecting virus is really good it also helps you discard so being able to discard a light or dark to help you set up these guys as well is really really powerful one breaker it itself is a dark but of course backward removal for you is really powerful one sinister serpent of course this is standard in all your gold format builds so of course you're going to be playing the one sinister two magician of faith as well as three thunder dragon and these are our main light monsters that you guys are going to see the reason you're playing these ones as your lights is one of course thunder dragon being able to put itself in the graveyard means you're always going to have lights in the graveyard for you to summon your big boys over here and then moth of course is just so good into the format like it's just so powerful you play so many power spells so magician of faith we're also playing one sangan of course helps you search into a lot of your deck two knight assailant one spear reaper and one Sukiyomi. so you guys can see over here it's actually a lot of dark monsters not so much the light monsters however the thing with the light monsters is as soon as you see one thunder dragon you're essentially seeing two light monsters in your graveyard and that's not including having it as a target to send off of tribe having it as a target to send off of some of the other cards that you guys are going to see in the deck as well right and i think these monsters are perfect i really like spirit reaper this is something that not a lot of people are playing but again like i said because this is such an aggressive deck there are times where you're like okay i need to prepare my setup and spirit reaper does that for you just having this on the field can't be destroyed by battle is really powerful as well and if you clear your opponent's board and you attack with this it takes away a lot of their hand advantage and that could be really powerful as well so that's it for the monster count over here i think this is actually the perfect monster count even though you guys might be thinking there's so many dark monsters i actually think it's perfect because the light monsters get themselves in the graveyard for you so you have to see the dark monsters so that they can actually get to the graveyard and have opportunities to go at the graveyard now of course we are playing goat format so we are going to play the staples pot of greed delinquent duo graceful charity heavy storm you have to be playing these in any goat deck essentially these are the best cards in the game so of course you're playing all of these duo is really nice actually because not just for you but if your opponent actually activates duo against you it can be actually very powerful being able to send lights or darks depending on the situation can be really nice so it's funny because i really like this deck it, it can play around a lot of these cards that are supposed to be super like win more cards right graceful charity another good card that you can send sinister serpent from your hand but you can also send cards like your thunder dragon as well the extra ones in your hand so that becomes really powerful right so heavy storm as well of course is really powerful i'm also playing the one giant trunade like i said this deck is very aggressive all you want to do is be able to set up your chaos monsters once you do you really want to be pushing for as much damage as possible if not otking so for that reason i like playing cards like giant trunade because essentially if you're able to set up your chaos plays and you're worried about a sakuretsu armor a mirror force etc you have the heavy storm you have the giant trunade we're also playing an mst over here for back row hate we're playing a lot of back row hate in this because that's essentially what this deck loses to the most so being able to have these cards having access to them is really powerful one snatch steal of course staple and then we're playing one card destruction card destruction of course in any chaos turbo build is really powerful if you don't have a chaos monster in your hand and you really need to see one in your hand you know you have game this helps you do that you have three four cards in your hand get rid of the light or dark monsters hopefully you can draw into one of your chaos monsters either a chaos sork or a bls and you're good to go we're also playing one book of moon two noblemen of cross out this is pretty standard i know some people are on two book of moon but i actually decided to cut the book of moons just down to one because we're playing two upstart like i said earlier you really want to get through your deck as fast as possible you want to be able to get to your chaos monsters you want to be able to set up a lot of your chaos plays so i actually really like 
playing Upstart Goblin because it's going to get you through your deck a lot faster. You're essentially playing a 38 card deck. Upstart Goblin is also at two in this format if anyone doesn't know. So that's why we're playing the two Upstart Goblin. And then, you know, standard goat stuff over here. Nothing too crazy outside of the Upstart. And then lastly for trap cards, we're playing the standard Torrential Tribute, Mirror Force, Ring of Destruction. We're playing two Compulse in this deck. Now, the reason I'm playing Compulse, by the way, you guys want to see my Ring of Destruction? Look how beat up it is. The funny thing about this card is that it actually doesn't go through the sleeve. It's just randomly beat up around the corners. I don't know, just funny. I just really want to show you guys some beat up Ring of Destruction. But it's an ultimate rare, which is kind of cool. However, I will say the reason I'm playing Compulse over any of the other trap cards is because I wanted the traps that were kind of chainable, right? I wanted traps where I can essentially activate the Compulse if they want to go MST or Heavy Storm or whatever like that. You can chain Compulse and break your opponent's board. I was also considering Jar of Greed, again, just to go through your deck a lot faster. If I was playing Jar of Greed, again, this is kind of all uh, something I'm testing with the Compulse. But if I am playing Jar of Greed, I probably cut the card destruction for something else maybe a morphing jar honestly but i really like the two compulse because it's a chainable trap another chainable trap is raigeki break of course because again if your opponent has a monster has a back row has something on their field at least you can chain the raigeki breaks chain the compulse and then you'll be able to kind of waste that mst that they use if they use a dust tornado or an mst they're losing a card right because them going mst on a compulse and you chaining it on their monster means essentially they lost their mst for nothing right so i do like these chainable traps but that's it for the deck it's it's 40 cards in the main deck now of course in goat format we all know we have an extra deck but we're not playing metamorphosis so you know literally if you guys want to play an extra deck honestly i would play an extra deck because if your opponent does see it you don't want to give it away that you're not playing metamorphosis so just play good cards honestly like these aren't even legal to be honest with you i just like playing them because they're japanese they look pretty but again you're not even using the extra deck in this so yeah i, I just kind of wanted to show it to you guys of course thousand eyes restrict one of my favorite cards of all time so it's cool that you can play them again you're not going to be playing them in this deck Moving on to the side deck, I actually started playing GOAT format locals a little bit more often. So I actually have side decks built and I actually really like the side deck for this deck. It's really aggressive and it covers a lot of matchups, which I think is really nice. So two Asura Priest. This is, of course, against a lot of the GOAT control matchups. You can go Asura Priest, break all their GOATs, which is really nice. So I like playing two. Again, you're only siding them against the GOAT control matchups. You can side them in against the Chaos control matchups as well because they do play GOAT. But, you know, I, I do like playing the two Asura Priest regardless. Two Berserk Gorilla. Berserk Gorilla is really powerful against a lot of decks that have big normal summons or those skills drain beatdown decks this can become very powerful as well so i do like berserk gorilla at two one jinzo there's a lot of backward decks that you just don't want to deal with and if you're just able to special summon a chaos sork banish a card your opponent controls normal summon jinzo you're pretty much winning the game a lot of time so i really do like playing the jinzo two more book of moons depending on the matchup i do like book of moon uh some cards and you know if your opponent's not playing a really back row heavy build you can side in book of moons and then at least get rid of a lot of their monsters one more giant true nade of course for back row hate again i want to get rid of the back row as fast as possible one source of revealing light this i side in actually funny enough against uh some of those kind of otk warrior decks i've seen a lot of those kind of decks running around i haven't played against it personally but i've seen a lot online and i'm like you know what one source of revealing light is actually really powerful because if you side this in and you don't get otk'd you can set up some of your chaos plays and then end up OTKing your opponent then of course we're playing two sakuretsu armor two dust tornado as well as two trap dust shoot when you're going first and you know your opponent's going to be playing against back row dust tornado is really good sakuretsu is also really good depending on the matchup and then trap dust shoot is always going to be good but the reason i don't main it the reason i side it is because if you're going into games two and three you really want to side it when you know you're going first if you main it yes it could be really powerful when you're going first but if you are going second it kind of does suck so i only like siding these in when i know i'm going first for sure so that is it for today's video thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you that is chaos turbo for the 2005 goat format of Yu-Gi-Oh. now this is one of the oldest formats in the game and it's also one of the most fun formats to go back and play chaos turbo is a very aggressive deck it really wants to be able to break boards otk and even if you're not otk you're pushing for a lot of damage and having a lot of card advantage as well which is really important in goat format now if you guys enjoyed today's video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we are uploading every single day in the month of december so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that and if you guys want to see more time wizard stuff on the channel rewind back in time just a little bit let me know in the comment section down below and i'm going to bring you guys more of that content so thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko signing out peace